Okay, so today we're going to add some color to our contour line shoe drawings. And there are just a few things I want to go over before you get started. First of all, we're going to be using watercolor paint. And I want to remind you that even if your watercolors look like this, there's still a little bit of paint left in there, so you don't need to ask for more until it's completely empty. Also, we want to make sure that we have the right size paintbrush for the job. If you grab a paintbrush that looks like this and you're trying to paint in some of your smaller details, you're going to have a hard time doing that neatly. So make sure if you're working on some of the smaller areas that you have a brush this size. Um, you could probably even do the background spaces with a brush like this because they're not super huge. Um, I am not going to give you um, a specific color scheme to follow for this project. So you can use your imagination. You can paint your shoes realistically based on what they actually look like. Or you can choose whatever funky colors you can think of. Just make sure you're using paint the artist's way when you are adding color. So if I wanted to paint this little section of my shoe green, remember you're getting a little bit of water on your brush, swirling it around in the paint until you have enough liquid paint to work with. And then you're going to outline the whole area before you fill it in, just like when we're using dry media and also like when we're using tempera paint. If you need more paint, add a little bit more water. But keep in mind, the more water that you add, um, usually the lighter your color is. So you don't want to go overboard with the water either. I'm using my bristles flat against my paper. We've talked about this before. If you use the point of your brush, it's harder to control. And once you get that outline done, you're just going to fill in your shape using straight overlapping lines. Now it's totally acceptable if you want to paint each shape of your shoe individually a separate color. Um, but since we are using watercolors, and since you've done some painting before, I want to give you the option to blend colors if you're interested in doing that. Some of your shoes might actually have blended colors on them, and you might be trying to recreate that, or you might just want to experiment a little bit. Either way, make sure if you're blending colors, you're choosing colors that are close to each other on the color wheel, because if colors are too different and you blend them together, they make a muddy sort of brownish color in the middle. Um, you can double check by looking at the color wheel to see if they're next to each other. Or think about rainbow order. If colors come next to each other in the rainbow, they'd be good to blend with. So I'm going to get my brush wet. I'm going to do a little example of blending in this space right here. And I'm just going to start with um, a blue color. I'm going to swirl my brush around in blue, just like we did before. I'm going to just carefully outline my shape so I don't get any paint leaking around the outside edges. I want that a little darker, so I'm going to go back over it. And then I'm going to fill in that space with my overlapping lines to about the halfway point in my shape, maybe a little bit beyond that. Now I'm going to rinse my brush. I'm going to blend my blue with violet, so I'm going to swirl my brush in violet next. And I'm going to do the same thing, but this time on the opposite edge of the shape. Outlining first, and then filling it in with straight overlapping lines. Now in order to get these colors to blend, because right now they're just one color next to another, you're going to rinse your brush off, and you're going to just use a plain brush with just water on it, and you're going to go over these colors from light to dark. Now my blue is looking a little lighter here because the purple really came on nice and strong, so I'm going to go from blue to violet. It might go the opposite direction depending on how your colors look on your paper, so you have to make that choice for yourself. But what the water in your bristles is going to do when you go over um, those colors again is it's going to pull some of that violet into the blue and some blue into the violet. So I like to go just over that center area, and then you can go back and forth in both directions if you'd like. I do once over it to get it a little bit wet, rinse my brush again, and then I just go back and forth over the seam, that area right where the blue touches the violet. And what starts to happen when you do that is those colors slowly transition from one to the other. And it creates that really cool blended effect in the middle. Again, once you have those colors blended the way you like, I would just get um, a brush clean again and go right over that blended area just to transition it a little bit more smoothly. You can see when I go up and down, over that area, those colors start to blend together and it really looks like one transitions into the other.